challenges and successes, hardship and joy, pain and blessings. The dichotomies of life, right? We eagerly embrace successes, joys and blessings, yet we become frustrated when challenges, hardship and pain intersect our lives. But what if the tough times of life are just cleverly disguised opportunities to grow? Resilience, strength, wisdom, courage, and grit are grown when we embrace and choose to learn from those challenging times of life. I invite you to tune your ear to the lessons and insights my guests gained when they fought to overcome the tough times that intersected their lives. Consider how their strategies, mindsets, and habits equipped and empowered them to grow, even thrive, despite the challenges they faced. Welcome to the Challenges Won't Stop Me podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Brown. I'm honored you've chosen to listen to this episode. I believe you will be encouraged and inspired to seek to grow through your challenges. Let's keep moving forward. Excited to have my friend, Dr. Grace English, with me again. Her story episode was about emotional infidelity. She has agreed to come back and for us to chat about getting real to heal. I just absolutely love the title, so I am ready to dig in about this topic with you. Yes. Thank you, Melanie. And I love this topic because God has shown that getting real to heal in my own personal life so many different times to break through strongholds that I had been under, that I want other people to experience that freedom. It all starts with getting real with God, with what you are going through. If you don't get real with him, how's he going to help you? You don't think you need help. You don't want help. But you know, at the same time, it is not healthy for you to be in that mindset. The getting really heal, Melanie, I see it in my patients when I'm counseling them one-on-one and they are anxious, depressed, whatever it is that they're going through. And I know their story. And some of their story is really painful. Like some have gone through abuse, some have gone through divorce, you name it, loss of child. But I can see it when people stuff things so far down because they're protecting themselves, because the pain is too much, that is not healthy. The Lord can't use that pain and that loss to minister to you and speak to you unless it rises up to the surface. You are in a place of vulnerability, but you know what? God knows anyhow. As a physician, I just have to ask this because I'm sure that you've seen enough of different kinds of patients and different kinds of struggles and strongholds and all of that, I would imagine that the stuffing of our emotions, our frustrations, being mad at God because this happened in our lives has to be unhealthy for many reasons, but does it have a physical response? Meaning, does it impact the body? And if so, how? Oh, yes. A lot of times when people stuff their feelings, A lot of people overeat. Food addiction is very real. It is easy to medicate with food. You can't avoid food. I have seen patients who've been sexually abused in the past and they've not had healing from that. They tend to have issues with food. You also see it coming out in depression, anxiety. They're blaming others for their problems instead of looking in the mirror and what is my responsibility in all of this. Instead of pointing fingers at other people, God has just taught me, Melanie, it's like the finger needs to be pointed back at me. If we, let's just say that we are struggling with some sort of sin, like what you talked about in the previous episode, but we're not willing to point the finger at ourselves and say, you know, I'm partly responsible for this and I need to get real to heal. The blame and the avoidance and the self-medicating, whether it's with food or alcohol or drugs or pornography or shopping, 
is Satan. He's keeping us stuck there, wouldn't you say? Yes, he's keeping you stuck there. And you have taken other behaviors to try to deal with the underlying wounds that have not been dealt with or you've not been willing to talk about. Some of this stuff is so, so hard, but I firmly, firmly believe Jesus, a good counselor, Christian counselor, a dear friend, mentor, they can help you get real about your pain and not get stuck in it. People are just so afraid. If you bring up the past, there's nothing good that comes out of from that. But that is so not the truth. The loss and the pain happened years ago. Acknowledge it. Own it. And I'm thinking that if something was painful from the past, whether it was abuse or divorce or loss of a child, right? you're still carrying that pain and it's still having an impact on you. When I have pain in my body, I don't want it to keep hanging around. I want to figure out what it is. Right. Whatever the treatment is, let's get on with it so that I can not have pain anymore. Now, I know that's very simplistic. I know that is. Right. But it's true. For example, I believe I had told you I had an abortion when I was 18, and I wasn't a believer then. But when I became a believer at age 23, I knew God had forgiven me, Melanie, but that yeah. was only head knowledge. Not until I became a mother did I honestly see... The fingers of that abortion was still very much buried deep inside of me. I couldn't connect with my child. I would have these yelling, screaming fits with Sarah. I knew my two-year-old child was not a monster. There was something seriously wrong with me. Not until I really got real and had true confession and repentance over my sin of abortion and acknowledging the humanity of my baby did God free me from that guilt and shame. He came to this earth to forgive us because he knew we would make poor choices that would have lasting effects. And it affects your relationships with the people that you are closest to. If I'm carrying guilt and shame from a past abortion, I'm thinking I'm going to prove that I'm going to be the best mom out there just because I have to prove something to myself. Or maybe I didn't feel worthy enough to receive any love for my children, my living children, because of my past sin of abortion. It all affects your mind, how you think about yourself, how you view others. And I had a lot of anger that came out when Sarah was two, and I can't do this. I knew that there was something that I needed to finally address. Another example of the Gating Real to Heal, growing up, I know this sounds crazy, but every morning I would wake up, Melanie, and I would think, where am I going to get my dessert for today? My life would be less than ideal if I did not get that dessert. And I did that for years. 40 pounds later, you're just like, what is going on here? When I finally got real about it, I realized that all through my whole life, I was told you're too fat, you can't eat dessert. I realized one day, Melanie, that I could get dessert anytime I wanted. I didn't have to feel this void of like not having sugar, you know? I mean, it's the craziest thing. But I thought, what is going on with that thinking process? That is so unhealthy. It was a stronghold. It was a stronghold. But not until I was willing to kind of go back into my past, he knew how I was raised. But sometimes we need to know how that affected us in the mindset that we're in. I just encourage your listeners, that is the first step toward healing and deliverance from any stronghold. What does it look like when you sit down and say, all right, Grace, girl, it is time to get real about this. There is something going on. You got to quit running from it. You got to quit stuffing it. What are you do? Do you talk to yourself? Do you write something down? Do you, what do you do? When I find myself in a confused state and my emotions and my thoughts are just all over the place, journaling helps me a lot. And it's amazing what comes out on paper that God reveals to me of what is in the crux of that whole mess. I don't journal all that often, but I do when I am 
in a rut. We're like, Lord, you have to to make it clear to me. And it may not be the first time, you know, it could be just continued writing and just you're writing to the Lord. Start with a question or do you start with a prayer or how do you start the journaling? Like, well, for instance, like with the food, why is it that I have to think about a dessert when I wake up in the morning? Like there's something wrong with that mindset. You're presenting that to God. You're saying, okay, God, I am asking you, what is going on here? Exactly. And you have to, because so many times we don't know what it is. We only have adopted that behavior and that mindset because that's how we've learned to cope. It's crazy. You got to call out the craziness of our thought and our habit. The same thing with the breaking free from emotional infidelity. Okay, own it. Sometimes for me, writing something down and seeing it in my own handwriting is eye-opening. It is. And then if you go a step further, okay, God, I, I just admitted it on paper here. It's in my own handwriting. I need you to explain this to me. What are the roots of this? I know what's happening now. I know the end product, but I need to go all the way back. And he will reveal it to you layer by layer, Melanie, because he's a gentleman, he's not going to hit you over the head with it. That's good. (laughs) He could tolerate it if he did. It's just seeking and praying and asking, Lord, you will tell me, I may not understand it totally, but I have this problem and I need for you to help me unravel and unearth this so I can be not in the stronghold anymore in that he can break me free from those thoughts that I'm having. Does he reveal scriptures to you? I mean, you have to be in the word of God, scripture, which whatever it is that you're dealing with. I think we have many idols in our life. He's a jealous God and he doesn't want to be put second on the back burner. And so when we think other things in this life are more important than him, then that's when we get into trouble could be my pride, status, things of this world that you're grabbing onto to feel like you are of some importance. I don't know. I think that getting really healed is, it's a very hard place for people to be willing to go there. And it takes, it takes a while for people to admit their problem and to own it. My job is just to help them, pray alongside with them, counsel them. One of my patients, absolutely sweet man, he, th- he thought he was born a woman. And I loved this patient because I started to get to know more about his history. And he didn't have a good childhood. I kept redirecting him back to God. He was in the church at one point, but then it disappointed him. And I just kept pointing him back. Are you talking to Jesus? Can you start talking to Jesus? He knows every single thing that you've been through. And I'm telling you, after three years, Melanie, he walked in. I am a man and I want to be the grandfather to my grandchild that God has always wanted me to be. It was just the power of the Holy Spirit that grabbed him. And it was absolutely amazing. You can be stuck like my sweet man that thought he would be happier as a woman and was taking hormones. I was like, no, it's just going to lead to destruction. and suicide and he wanted to get gender affirming you know, surgical care and oh you can't do that and I would just show him articles about it but we just always went back to, what is God talking to you about these days or have you talked to him it was an absolute miracle I mean I walked that journey with this sweet man for several years I never thought he was going to have a breakthrough but God showed up in a big way which is a beautiful thing which leads me to this comment that I've been thinking as you've been sharing Mm. is it all is directed back to God. Whatever it is that we struggle with, whether it's a challenge or an obstacle or failure or the world enticing us, whatever it is, the root of it is that we need to go back to God. Lay it in his lap. Be honest. As you've said numerous times, be honest. Right. You've got to be honest about what it is that the challenge is. Right. And say, can't do this without you. I've got to get free of this. Right. 
that's so important. We've got to get free from what is keeping us stuck or manifesting itself in anger, which is impacting our family. As you said in the last episode, the devil is all about deception and (laughs) taking you on a detour and then ultimately in destruction. Right. I don't want at the end of my life to those words cover what has happened in my life. I want words about power and authority of God working in my life, living that abundant life. If we're stuck in all these things of the devil, we can't live that abundant life. You're not going to experience the abundant life. If you don't get real about your loss and your pain, God's not going to force himself into you and to make you heal. Yes. Want it. You have to desire it. You have to seek it. You have to call out to him. I just honestly think people make this harder than it needs to be, Melanie. I think you're right, Grace. Let's wrap up with this topic of what have you experienced since you got real? And what does that look like? Because I want people that are stuck to say, oh, I want that. So I'm willing to do the work because what Grace described and Melanie described, I want that. Right. The freedom from past guilt and shame. Yes. And experiencing the power of his forgiveness and how God can orchestrate good from even something that was terrible in your life. Because you start seeing his hand of working in your life. And Jesus came to set the captives free. We have to proclaim liberty, and he wants to give us liberty. He doesn't want us to live a life of condemnation, of like, oh, I'm not worthy because I did this in the past. I think so many people struggle with that. They condemn themselves because of a bad choice that they made in the past, and they're stuck. They may even tell me that they're believers, but I don't think necessarily that they've really gone to the Lord about it. Well, because... God's word says there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There is none. He doesn't condemn us. Yes. That freedom from guilt and shame, the healing that he will do in your own heart and in your own mind, and how that benefits the relationships that are the closest to you. Because the love that the Lord just pours into your life will overflow into others in your life. Relationships are messy. We just have to remember that I have to ask for forgiveness just as much as somebody has to, you know, ask me for forgiveness. I just think there's so much the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self control that God gives you when you do get real to heal because He takes you on that journey. I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to take you through where you can be whole and free, not damaged, restored. And it just comes out in your life. Now, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And no matter what is happening, I've had breast cancer this year. It's not been an easy year. I'm finishing up the radiation. I remember, Melanie, the first two weeks of the breast cancer diagnosis, I was numb. I couldn't even pray. I was in denial, didn't know why this was happening to me. And I felt so bad from the chemo, not until I finally came out of that. And I just, I told my friends, I can't pray. I I just, I feel so bad. I can't pray. My friends interceded. I had to tell them I cannot pray. They started praying on my behalf. My prayer warrior stepped up. And one day I started praying again. And not until this cancer sucks and it's not fair. And why me, Lord? I'm not even 60 yet, and I've got breast cancer. All the reasons why. But Jesus understands. He understands why we're upset. Even during my cancer journey, I have had to just get really real with the Lord. And God, this really sucked. And he's like, I know it does, but I am writing your story, and there is going to be purpose from this whole journey. Amen. And that's who he is. Yes. Even with this health issue, it's not a stronghold you created. It's just a health issue. Yes. You got real, but you didn't get stuck there because you could have. 
And I definitely could have, but people are just like, can't believe how well you've sailed through chemo, sailed through the cancer, because I've had a really good attitude. And that is because the Lord has been right there. Amen. If I didn't, I would have a very bad attitude if I was still angry and mad and upset and fighting. And But instead, he's like, I've allowed this to happen to you for a reason that you don't understand right now, but one day you will. Haven't you learned so much this journey about yourself, about God, about his faithfulness? Yes, I have, Melanie, and how he is in the details of our life. Yes. How he shows up in our family and our friends who truly love you. And I would have never experienced that, Melanie. I, you know, we're all too busy to have time for relationship. Well, not just cancer. My whole world just stopped. My work world just stopped. And all I had was people just coming in and loving on me. Let me do this for you. And it's a place of definitely humility because I'm used to being the one that fixes everything. Well, you are a doctor. So, yeah, I can understand why you think that. But I told the Lord the other month that I was grateful, thankful for my cancer. Because yes. um, love it. I would never, ever learn if I had not been through what I've been through this year. One of the things that I've learned with my health struggles is I want to be near God. When I first get a diagnosis, I'm like, I don't like this. This is very intrusive. You've interrupted my life and I'm going to have to put some things on hold. All those things. Yes. But then I'm seeking God. I want to be near God because I don't want that challenge or struggle to dominate my life. I don't want to get stuck there. I want to learn whatever lessons that struggle is supposed to be teaching me. And so much of what you learn during a challenge is about God and his personality and that his word is true. That peace that passes understanding. I read that verse multiple times throughout my life. Mm Mm-hmm. But I experienced it when I was approaching brain surgery. I am experiencing this peace that God talks about in his word. And I wouldn't have known about this right before. You're walking in it. Yes. You're in it and you've not ever experienced it. And there's no other explanation. Yes. That he- That's so many times where we see the reality of God's word and his faithfulness and his promises are true. Yes. It's definitely been a year to remember, but when all my hair was falling out from the chemo, just gobs of hair, and I was warned that's very traumatic for women. But one day after all my hair had fallen out, the Lord just said, I will regrow every single hair that you lost. When my hair started growing back about two months ago, It reminds me of his faithfulness. Growing back, it's soft. It's crazy. I absolutely love what he's continuing to teach me. There's more that I need to be taught, Melanie. I am definitely not through. And I think he's going to continue teaching me probably for many, many years. Grab your journal and be writing down what he's teaching you. Yeah. You'll want to look back on that from years from now and go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, for sure. It is is just powerful. Well, Grace, thank you so much for coming back and sharing your mindset about getting real to heal. I think it is truly valuable, and I love the examples that you shared. I am just praying the listeners take this to heart, and when they encounter a stronghold or a challenge or a struggle or an obstacle, failure, whatever, Mm -hmm. to, to do the things that you had talked about earlier. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you for having me on your show. Appreciate you. Appreciate you too, friend. 